well, we've had a tumultuous month and a tumultuous week, which ended appropriately with Halloween. Let me try to take you through what happened. The big event that everybody expected was that the Federal Reserve ended its QE bond purchases. The big event that nobody expected was that the Bank of Japan raised its bond purchases on Friday. The response was immediate. As we can see, the yen tanked. That's exactly what it wanted to happen. It's now at its weakest uh, post-crisis. Meanwhile, the uh, Japanese stock market rallied very impressively. Uh, also, uh, that had knock-on effects in the US. The S&P 500 index has now tripled compared to its low in March 2009. It's at an all-time high. What's particularly remarkable is that uh, in the space of the last five weeks, it has sold off 9.8% and then regained more than 10%. Remarkable volatility that shows that something is amiss. Now, the longer-term message to take from this week, with uh, the Fed now apparently in a, in a different position from the other central banks, is that the uh, uptrend in the dollar appears to be rising. As you can see, the uh, trade-weighted index of the dollar uh, it looks as though it bottomed some years ago. Uh, during the crisis. We can expect it to continue to rise. That's certainly a very strong consensus. That will have interesting effects elsewhere. Uh, the other fascinating development from this week is what's happened to the price of gold. You would normally expect uh, a big central bank like the Bank of Japan doing something aggressively in the way of easy money to send the gold price up. You see instead the gold price is really quite dramatically falling. It's as low as it's been since 2010 now. The good news from that is that the great fears about monetary debasement that uh, attached, the, uh, attached to the various QE programs seem to have died down. The bad news is that uh, people no longer believe that there's going to be inflation. They think there's going to be deflation that would uh, enable uh, paper currencies such as the dollars, dollar to actually gain in value. The, the, uh, the gold market does seem to be sending a very deflationary message. Also, uh, one other note from this week, I think it's important to look up. The uh, Bank, Central Bank of Russia made a surprise rate hike uh, on Friday. Uh, its inflation rate is up to uh, over 8%. The ruble has been weakening dramatically this, uh, this year because, uh, the, uh, because the Russian economy is so heavily exposed to the falling oil price. Uh, what's intriguing is that it took this dramatic measure, felt that it needed to do so, and also, as you can see, uh, it's not necessarily had that much of an effect on the ruble thus far. And there will be many other uh, central banks in emerging markets which similarly could face very difficult dilemmas uh, in the current environment. Now, what's ahead? It's the first week of the month next, next week, which means there will be a lot of data, particularly on Monday we get ISMs, always very, very useful because you can compare countries very directly and they prove to be very good leading indicators of the economy. As you can see, the picture going into uh, November's ISMs is quite clear. It appears that the US is uh, moving ahead. Any number above 50 indicates uh, expansion. Any number below 50 indicates the possibility of recession. All the other major economies in the world appear to be contracting. It would obviously make everybody feel better if those lines converged and if they converged towards the US rather than converging downwards. The biggest event that we can see coming next week is the meeting of the European Central Bank. The ECB is under very great pressure to do more in the way of bond purchases, to, to do easier money. The consensus is that they won't need to do that just yet, but that was exactly the same as applied to the Bank of Japan this week. You cannot discount the possibility, the risk of uh, a big surprise uh, from the ECB coming this week. And then on Friday we have what is always still the uh, most important data release of any month, which is the US non-farm payrolls. It's noisy, it's subject to revision, uh, it's been uh, improving dramatically for the last year or so. Many people will be looking very carefully uh, at US employment numbers to see if the hope that's currently invested in the US economy is truly justified. We also have many, many more earnings uh, from uh, the US and Europe as companies come clean about the real picture. So lots more data that next week. In an environment where a number of large central banks appear to be very scared about what's going on, we could really do with some reassurance from that data. Let's hope we get it.